The Franciscan priest Richard Rohr wrote this, the path of prayer and love and the path of suffering seem to be two great paths of transformation. Suffering seems to get our attention. Love and prayer seem to get our heart and our passion. Prayer is such an important ritual, such an important part of our faith tradition. And it is an important grounding ritual that we're gonna explore a little deeper today. You know, there's so many different kinds of prayer. If you're like me, you probably grew up praying. You know, if you're a part of any kind of faith tradition, prayer is an integral part of it. And there's so many different types of prayer. There's intercessory prayer, you know, praying for the needs of others, petitioning God for others. There is prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of blessing, prayers of confession and repentance. And all of these different kinds of prayers are rooted in rich tradition and rooted in scripture. And they're so important. But today I wanna to explore maybe a kind of prayer that might be new to you, but it's definitely not new to our faith tradition. And that is contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer is the kind of prayer that I like to think of as the kind of prayer that represents our being, our being with God. You know, sometimes when I'm on a road trip with my husband, you know, we'll talk and we'll fill each other in on our days or what, you know, is on our mind or what we're thinking about. You know, we'll let each other know some of our dreams or we'll, you know, maybe even discuss big topics with one another. But some of my most favorite times are when we have talked and we've dialogued and then the car goes silent and we're simply just driving maybe looking out the window, maybe thinking our own thoughts, but we're really just being with each other. And you know, those times when we are just sitting and being with each other without words, sometimes are the most precious, even the most intimate ways of being with one another. Even when we're not talking, we're actually communicating. We're communicating that we enjoy one another. We're communicating that we feel this sense of closeness that we don't have to even use words to know that we love one another and that we are in each other's presence with safety and with connection. Contemplative prayer is just like that. You know, the, the old uh, Saint Teresa of Avila, she wrote, contemplative prayer, in my opinion, is nothing else than a close sharing between friends. It means taking time frequently to be alone with him who we know loves us. Contemplative prayer seeks him whom my soul loves. It is Jesus and in him the Father. We seek him because to desire him is always the beginning of love. And we seek him in that pure faith which causes us to be born of him and to live in him in this inner prayer. We can still meditate, but our attention is fixed on the Lord himself. I love that quote because it invites us into this very simple method, this very simple approach to prayer, which is just simply being with Christ, simply sitting in his presence. I was talking to somebody the other day and they were sharing with me that sometimes I go to prayer and I feel like I just don't have any words. And I sort of feel bad about that. I feel like maybe something is wrong with me that, you know, the words don't come and when I just come into prayer, I don't quite know what to pray. And maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I am getting bored with my faith or what's going on with me? Why, why don't I have that? And, and I was encouraging this individual that actually prayer can look like so many other things and be beyond even words. Just like when I'm sitting in the car with my husband or with a close friend. And we don't need words to communicate with one another always. We can just simply be in each other's presence. We can do the same with God. In fact, we're invited into this inner space of prayer that is incredibly precious and deep and very grounding. So what is contemplative prayer and how do we find it even maybe in scripture? Well, I love Psalm 46 where we hear the psalmist say these words, be still and know that I am God. That can be a starting point for us as we explore contemplative prayer. 
that we are invited to simply just sit and be still. Be still, not just in our bodies, but find a place of stillness in our spirits where we connect to Christ and we just know. We find that inner knowing that He is with us, that He is God within us and allow His Spirit to minister to our hearts in that wordless space. I'm gonna talk in a second about how we go into this, but I wanna first talk about why. Why would we do this kind of prayer? Oh my goodness, we live in an age where we are inundated with words. We are inundated with messages. In fact, you're watching this likely on a screen or in a medium that is maybe interrupting you right now with a message, a text message or an ad or uh, something that's trying to grab your attention. We live in a context where we are constantly filled with words, where we have very little space for silence, very little space for quiet, very little space for our hearts to come to a resting place. And what this means is that when we come to the place of prayer, often our hearts are busy, our hearts are loud, and even when we do shut our mouths or even when we do shut off the noises and the sounds around us, it can feel like internally our hearts are so loud and are filled with the chaos. Maybe even the feeling of just being tossed and turned. You know, I like to think of it feeling like the waves of the ocean, you know, and how it picks up and churns sand and the waves roll in and they roll out and sand is churned and picked up and there's not sort of this stillness. This summer, I, I spent some time at a lake in Minnesota and there's something really powerful about looking out across a lake when there's no wind and there's very few waves and it's just quiet. And I have this sense when I look out at this lake that that is the invitation and even the longing of my heart is that I would come to a place where my heart can rest in the knowing, rest in the presence, in the peace of God. But that can be hard to get to. That can be really difficult to get to, especially in our day and age when we don't have many moments of silence, when we don't have many moments of rest and quiet when we don't have many moments of knowing that simply just being is enough. In fact, we live in a society and in a culture where we're told that you are not enough on your own. You need to do, you need to produce, you need to achieve, you need to get this many followers, you need to have this many likes, you need to you know, do this for the kingdom of God, or you need to encourage people in this way and, and be this way to have value and worth in the world. And what contemplative prayer does is it reminds us that at the end of the day, none of that actually matters. We may do all of that. We may go and we may make great impact, you know, for God even. We may end up, you know, achieving a lot of success, what our culture calls success. But none of that actually really satisfies us. None of that actually really grounds us. None of that actually really causes our hearts to find a place of true rest and a sense of coming home. In contemplative prayer, we're reminded that we don't have to do. We don't have to achieve. We don't have to find the affection of the crowds out there or maybe that person out there that we're hoping will validate us. We don't have to acquire more possessions and get more things to feel like we're successful. Really, at the end of the day, all of our goodness and our worth comes from knowing that we are loved as we are, as we are just being in the presence of God, allowing him to love us in that place is enough. And contemplative prayer brings us back to that. So how do we do it? Well, I want to encourage you to, one, know that this is a rich tradition with many, many different uh, thing, passages in scripture that we can find ourselves in, or even many different writers that have written eloquently on this topic. So go search this out for yourself. 
do a Google search on contemplative prayer and go on a, you know, go down that rabbit trail and find how many rich traditions we can, we can find ourselves in, in, in this place. But I also want to encourage you that you don't have to know much about this to even try it out today. So what I want to encourage you to do is maybe even after you end this video is to shut off your computer or your phone or whatever you're, you're, you know, watching this on and sit down and just take five minutes to simply sit in silence, to simply sit in the presence of God. Likely your mind will go all sorts of places. Likely you'll get distracted and start thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch or, you know, what your friend might have just texted you or, you know, fill in the blank. That's okay. That's okay. The point isn't that we are trying to just empty our minds and not think about anything. It is that we are returning ourselves consciously to a place of being, of acknowledging that we are in the presence of God and we are loved and beloved. So shut off this video, take a moment, sit down, perhaps use the verse Psalm 46 and repeat it to yourself a few times. Take a deep breath and just be still in the presence of God and know that you are loved, that he is with you today. I want to invite you to ground your heart in this deep, rich tradition, this deep, rich type of prayer that you can be invited into and find your heart coming home to the most true thing about you, which is that you are loved.